Some of you out there might be familiar with this tablet. It was actually the world's first AMD powered x86 tablet from Menace Forum known as the V3. And since then they've released a few different variants. Out of the box, this comes with Windows 11 installed and it's powered by an AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. Really good performance for what we've got here, but in this video, we're going to be testing out official SteamOS running on this device. And so far, I'm really impressed by what I'm seeing here when it comes to low TDP performance and even high TDP performance. And if you're not 100% familiar with this tablet, I wanted to give you a quick rundown. The screen here is a 14 inch 2560 by 1600 165 hertz VRR display. Since this is their higher end version, powered by that 8840U, it does have 32 gigabytes of onboard LP DDR5X RAM running at 6400 megahertz. It also came with a pre-installed one terabyte M.2 SSD. And the battery here is a little over 50 watt hours with 65 watt PD fast charging. And since the release of the 8840U version, they've also released an SE version, which does have a lower end 7000 series AMD APU and less RAM. But the one we have here is powered by that Zen 4 8840U, and we've got the 780M iGPU with 12 compute units. Got the official Steam controller connected here, and like I mentioned, this is official Steam OS. I used the Steam Deck recovery image and then updated to Steam OS 3.8. So far, everything's been working from Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, obviously we've got that VRR display, SteamOS Hollow 3.8 and moving down, 8840U, eight cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of RAM. And from the BIOS, I've gone in and dedicated eight of those gigs to VRAM, but it's actually showing a little more here from within SteamOS. I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but I do have eight gigs dedicated from the BIOS. Personally, I love this display. It is a variable refresh rate display up to 165 hertz, which is definitely overkill for the chip we have here, but I've got it enabled. And I've also managed to install full TDP and GPU control here. If we try it from here, manual GPU clock, you'll see it'll only go up to 1600, but this will go much higher. I've installed a third party plugin known as Simple Decky TDP Control. Now we can go from four watts up to 40. We can disable boost, disable SMT, and control the GPU clock across the board. So yeah, I mean, basically we've got everything working with this tablet here. And if you wanted to do video out, we've got two USB 4 ports on this. Both of them do video out and it does work here in SteamOS. So if you wanted to connect this to a larger monitor, shouldn't be an issue to do so. But now I want to show you how this thing performs. So let's go ahead and jump into some gaming. And the first one we have here is the Witcher 3 1080p Steam Deck preset 15 watt TDP. So from our TDP control, you can see we're right there at 15 watts. And I've got this at 1080 because I'm compiling a list of different devices and how they perform. I have yet to test the 8840U with uh, SteamOS or official SteamOS, just to be able to do a big comparison between a lot of different devices, especially the Steam Deck itself. But yeah, as you can see, with that Steam Deck preset at 1080, we're up in the mid 70s with it. Not too bad for a 15 watt TDP. And of course we can go up to 40 watts with this so we could get a lot more out of it if we wanted to. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal 1080p low 15 watt TDP. And I wanted to run this on battery just to see what kind of battery life we could expect out of something like this. And we've only got a 50 watt hour battery. With a game like this at a 15 watt TDP, looks like we're pulling close to a total of 27 watts from the battery, which isn't bad given the screen size here. And if we were to play a game that's a lot easier to run, say Hades 2 at a 10 watt TDP, we're now pulling up to around 17 watts from that battery. I was actually expecting a lot more and I know we've got a low TDP set on the CPU, but everything else needs to be in the equation like this 14 inch display. And while I've got this game at 60 Hertz right now, it will run at 120, around 14 Watts. It's gonna pull more like that, but I really kind of wanted to get an idea of battery life. And now that I know total draw from the battery at 15 and 10 Watts at the end of the video, we can take a look at that. Another easier to run game I wanted to test here was Kingdom Hearts 3. We're at 1080 low, 100% resolution scale, only a 12 watt TDP to get up to 60 FPS. If you wanna do this at 120, you're gonna to have to take it up to around 18 watts, but it will do it with these same settings. I mean, we can do 120 on this screen and it looks great like that. 
So recently, we've got a lot of updates for Spider-Man 2, and for the most part, it's kind of ruined the fun with an iGPU in this game. Even during the initial launch, when this game was so buggy, I was seeing way better performance with the 780M and even the ROG Ally X in Steam. But now, even with frame gen on at a 20 watt TDP, 900p low settings, we're still dipping under 60 in some cases. I really do hope this is fixed soon. I always love throwing in at least one fighting game, so we've got Street Fighter 6, 1080, medium, 15 watt TDP. And uh, this game has come a long way with these iGPUs. When it was initially launched, 18 watts low 900p was where you kind of had to run it on something like this, but now we're at medium 15 watts, steady 60 with it. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, Steam Deck preset, 15 watt TDP, and we're running this at 900p. On the Steam Deck, I mean, we only go up to 800p. This is pretty decent, but we can get a lot more out of it using frame gen or even taking the TDP up. At about 25 watts, we're seeing an average of around 67 FPS with it like this, but it's not a huge jump like I thought it would be from 15 up to 25. Borderlands 3 is a bit hit or miss. We're at a 25 watt TDP, and for the most part, I mean, we're getting a decent frame rate here, but there are cases where it's gonna fall right on its face. I mean, in the lower 40s when there's a lot of effects and particles on screen. And I even went back and lowered the internal resolution down to 75% just to see if that would help out. We did get a higher frame rate, but I still saw those dips. Ratchet and Clank ripped apart using some frame gen here. At low 720, you can run this over 60, but if you wanted to take the resolution up and those settings to 900p medium, FSR frame gen is a must on this APU, even at a 20 watt TDP. And finally, I wanted to test out Elden Ring. We're at 900p low, 25 watt TDP. And uh, for some reason, I just cannot get this to perform very well on this chipset. Of course, we could take the resolution down to 720p and see a nice little bump. But even at 720, 25 watt TDP, we're not quite getting a steady 60 FPS out of it. In fact, even if I take this up to a 40 watt TDP, in some cases, it dips way under 60. So something is going on here. Just take it up from here, 40 watts. And yeah, it just can't straighten itself out for long. When it comes to battery life, we've got a 50.82 watt hour battery. All my testing was at 50% brightness, 60 hertz mode. And keep in mind, SteamOS is not optimized for this system, but at a 10 watt TDP, we're seeing around three hours. 15 watt drops down to around one hour and 45 minutes and at a 20 watt TDP, one hour and 20 minutes. 65 watt quick charging here does help out. We can get that battery charged up pretty quickly, but it's definitely fallen short when you compare it to newer handhelds and those 80 watt hour batteries. So yeah, this actually worked out really well as a Steam Deck tablet. I mean, with official Steam OS installed, obviously first thing you're gonna wanna do on something like this is game. But remember, we've got that desktop built in here with the detachable keyboard, everything's working. You can go through, install whatever you'd like from terminal, but if you don't wanna use that, you can use Discover, just like you would on the Steam Deck. You can go through, install standalone games, uh, standalone emulators, apps. You could do some photo editing on this. The 8840U all by itself with that 780M is a really decent chip. And given the fact that we can go up to 40 watts in this, and I would suggest, you know, being plugged into the wall at 40 watts, you're gonna have plenty of power on a system like this. This really does make for a good Linux desktop experience. Browsing the web, you can watch YouTube. I mean, basically anything you're gonna do on a laptop or a PC, you can do over here. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Since we've got that 8840U, I figured I'd go ahead and throw this into the mix. And uh, Valve is gonna be releasing a beta of SteamOS that's gonna be a lot easier to install for everybody. And once that's released, I will do a full comparison between a bunch of different chips and what we've got right now, like the ROG Ally, the Ally X, the Legion Go, the Legion Go S. We'll face them off against each other and we'll even throw the Steam Deck in the mix just to see where everything sits. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to see anything else running on the V3 in Linux or even Windows, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.